This video tutorial is going to be starting video tutorial of signals and systems with MATLAB. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to uh, show you how one can plot sinusoid signal uh, in MATLAB environment. For a sinusoid signal, uh, we have already learned basic thing in theory classes that uh, X of T uh, is a sinusoid signal and its definition uh, would be something like that. A cos 2 pi of t plus phi, right? Where A is basically amplitude of the signal, uh, frequency, F is the frequency of the signal, fundamental frequency, and uh, phi is the phase of the signal. And that we are going to plot in uh, MATLAB environment. So we will use this fundamental definition of sinusoid signal in MATLAB environment. Let's uh, see how we will do it in MATLAB environment. This is the basic MATLAB environment and this environment I'm going to use uh, for plotting purpose of signals. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start a script or a simple editor file in which I can actually write the code and how I will do that uh, for that purpose, uh, in this home window, we, we have various functions available. Uh, option or the function that I'm going to use is basically the leftmost function, which is known as new script. So when I'm going to click on it, uh, you see that there is an editor file, which is by default named as untitled. So you can actually rename it or you can write some code here. So I'm going to write my code over here. So remember, I need to plot sinusoid signal. And for sinusoid signal, we have certain uh, parameters. For example, we need to know what is the amplitude of the signal. Let's say I'm going to use the maximum peak to peak amplitude around two, or the maximum peak of the signal goes to two. So let's say A is amplitude. Uh, let's say frequency of the signal I'm going to use just for the uh, sake of uh, visualization so that we can actually compare and then we will let it change the frequency. Frequency is one, right? And then we need phi or the phase, right? So phi is a variable which I have just written for the purpose of uh, uh, phase. And let's say initially I'm going to assume that there is no phase in the signal, right? So phase equals to zero or phi equals to zero. Then we need time vector for which we want to define the signal. Let's say I want to start uh, time uh, from zero to five, right? So let's say zero and there are going to be sample space uh, T. Uh, I'm going to talk about this uh, sample space as well, but uh, we will define after the final limit. This is going to be very interesting and very important. Remember, uh, try to notice this thing. T equals to zero colon T colon five. That means zero is the starting limit, right? And five is the final limit. So time vector will start from zero second and it will go to, uh, it will go to uh, five seconds. While T is the space between the two consecutive samples, there will be number of samples available, right? Uh, and we will be using the sample space equal to the uh, capital D. And what is sample space? Sample space for a uh, for a signal is the difference between uh, the two consecutive sample in time, right? For example, let's say I'm going to take the first sample on zero and the next sample on 0 0.1 second. So the sample space between the zero and 0 0.1 is 0 0.1, right? For example, uh, let's, take a, let's take another example. If first sample is at one, and a second exam, second sample is at two, so sample space would sample space would be what two, right? But how one should calculate it? That is the most important uh, thing. So sample space is basically the reciprocal of one over fs. And what is fs? Uh, fs is the sampling frequency. We must be aware that MATLAB is a digital software working on a digital machine uh, and digital machine can actually produce only digitized signal or digital signals, right? So digital signals uh, need uh, sampling frequency. 
and sampling frequency is usually uh, the twice of the fundamental frequency. I'm going to discuss these things in theory classes because it is according to Nyquist rate. But uh, uh, for this course or for this uh, video series, I'm going to assume that FS will be uh, 8,000. Why 8,000? Because I'm going to assume that I'm going to plot the signals which are uh, vocal frequencies. Uh, which comes from the vocal frequencies and vocal frequencies ranges from 300 hertz to 3400 and usually they are termed as 4 kilohertz. So twice of 4 kilohertz is basically 8000. That is why FS we will assume in this series is 8000. So T would be what? Uh, uh, 1 over FS and similarly uh, it has to go down because T should be defined first. So now we are ready for complete uh, variables. Now we need to define the signal. Let's say X is the signal that we want to define. And that is what cosine signal A static cos. Uh, cos is the built-in function for the MATLAB uh, in, in the MATLAB environment for the cosine or sinusoid signal. So the definition is 2 pi. Pi is the keyword for uh, basically uh, the pi, uh, irrational number pi. So then F F is the fundamental frequency, then the time vector. Now our definition is complete, except the phase, so phi is, will be the next thing. So this is the same definition that I've shown you earlier. So A is amplitude, cos is the function name or the built-in function for cosine or sinusoid signal. Uh, pi is the keyword uh, for pi defined in MATLAB, its value is equal to 3.14. Remember it is an irrational constant. F is the fundamental frequency. I have already defined it. Time, T is the time vector. And phi is zero here, but we will define since it is defined in this uh, signal. So now this definition is complete. The next command to plot any signal, we need to write plot. P L O T plot. Plot is a keyword for defining, uh, uh, for plotting any signal, and it requires two argument. First is the time vector or the first vector against which you, you will, which, which will be used in X axis and which is basically time here. And the next thing is basically the Y, which is uh, the uh, X or the signal, right? Remember it will be X will be the Y axis for the graph of the signal because we want to plot the magnitude of the signal. Okay, if I'm going to uh, run this code, let's say this is the key, this is a button for run if I'm going to click on it. Uh, it will first of all ask, please save this uh, uh, key, save this uh, editor file or AMP file. Uh, so let's say I'm going to I'm going to name it sign plotting or sinusoid plotting. You can name it anything, but there should be extension dot M, right? M is for MATLAB or matrix. So basically M should be the extension. So now its name is run and now you can see this graph. This is the graph that I wanted to show you. And if you are observing it, uh, it is basically, uh, there are various things that we need to, uh, we need to understand. Uh, it's starting from zero, it goes to five, right? And we need to confirm whether this is basically uh, uh, frequency of one or not. So let's consider only one cycle. Let's say there was from zero, to one second, sorry, one second, not one cycle. And eventually uh, you will see how many cycles are produced in this one second. So this is the peak, this is a negative peak and it goes to again other peak. So this is the, this duration is basically for one cycle and one cycle is completed in one second. So that means uh, uh, the frequency of the signal is one Hertz because there is one uh, cycle completed in one second, right? Uh, furthermore, one thing to be noticed here, the maximum peak goes to two because remember we defined the two in the magnitude, right? Similarly, we defined minus two, uh, uh, we defined uh, two as a peak value. So in negative cycle, it also goes to minus two. So I hope this is clear. Just to clarify it further, uh, let's say I want to change the frequency, right? So to change the frequency, uh, let's say I'm, I'm back to the code and let's say I'm going to use the frequency, let's say four. 
So what is going to happen now? There should be four cycles completed uh, in one second. Let's see if it is going to happen or not. I'm going to run this code. And you see, this is the new graph. And this time it's very difficult to analyze because uh, this is very compact figure uh, because, but this is, the, this is the region, zero to one. And if you notice this time, uh, I hope you can see it. Uh, there's, there's one negative peak, there is another negative peak, there is another negative peak, and there is another negative peak. So almost four cycles are completed, right? But I want to actually uh, zoom it or compact it for one second only. Though the time vector is defined for uh, five complete seconds, but I want to compact it for only one time duration or for one second duration. So how would I do it? Let me show you there is a, a good command by which you can do it. And that is called access. By using the access command, you can actually uh, uh, access the or limit the access of the figure, right? Let's say I, I know that uh, it is going to be a vector. The, there will be four entries, A, B, C, and D. What is A here? A should be the minimum limit of X axis, right? So let's say I'm going to start for zero second. So minimum limit of X axis would be zero, right? Similarly, I want to go for, uh, I want to plot the signal just for one second, or I want to show the figure for one second. So the maximum limit of the time or maximum limit of the uh, X axis would be one. The next thing, next two numbers are related to amplitude. So the, we know that the peak of the signal is two. So it will go minus two and it will go to plus two uh, in both axes, in Y axis. So basically the lower limit of the Y, let's say I, I make it, minus 2.5 so that signal is completely visible i know that my signal goes to minus 2 only but i am trying to show you the figure and then it is also uh, 2.5 in positive x axis so access uh, command de uh, defines a vector uh, which actually sets the limit for the figure uh, the very first entry is the lower limit of x axis the second entry is the upper limit of the x axis and then uh, the third entry is the lower limit of the y-axis and the fourth entry is the upper limit of the x-axis. If I'm going to run it, what is going to happen? Let me run the code. See, this is the code. Uh, and now you can see that, I hope you can easily see that the signal is starting from zero second and goes to one second. And furthermore, you can see there are only four cycles. This is a positive peak, the one cycle completed here, the third cycle, com second cycle completed here, third and the fourth one, right? So basically four cycles are completed in one second. That means frequency is definitely four hertz. Furthermore, uh, the lower limit of the y-axis is minus 2.5, although signal goes to just two minus two. And similarly, the upper limit of uh, the of the figure is 2.5, although signal goes to just two plus two, right? So that's how you can actually set the uh, figure x-axis. One thing I want to also add here, uh, you know that we have also, we have already plotted a signal, but we want to name some x-axis and y-axis. We know that x-axis is time and y-axis is basically the signal, the x the original signal that we wanted to plot. For example, it is X of T. It is a continuous time signal. So it, it is X of T and that we want to write in Y and that we want to uh, write in uh, uh, X axis as well, right? So we want to label them. So there are two important uh, commands that I want to add here, uh, okay. X label, in X label, whatever you want to write or whatever you want to label the, X axis with, you just name it. So let's say uh, X label is time and it is in seconds, right? Y label, Y label is basically amplitude. Amplitude of let's say X of T. X of T is a signal 
and its amplitude is shown in y axis, right? So if I'm going to run this code now, what is going to happen? I hope you can see that uh, their amplitude of x of t, this y axis is now labeled, this x axis is now labeled with time, right? Uh, one thing you can also add here, which is useful in plotting of signals, though it is something extra, but sometime it is needed. So I will just add it here. In the very last, you can simply write, so because sometimes you also need grids or you, uh, you need scaling. So grid on should be the command. If you write it, what is going to happen, just run it and you will notice that there is a complete grid defined uh, beside the, in the background of the graph. So now you can easily understand, okay, this line indicates for peak value Right. Furthermore, if you want to calculate the value at any instant, there is a something called data cursor. Let me show you. There it is. Yeah. In tools, if you go and if you see something called data tip, so if you just click on any point, you see X value is 2.2846. So this is almost right. You can actually visualize it here, right? And Y value is basically 1.289, which is also correct. You can actually ch uh, change this data tip. You can, uh, you can add another data tip, uh, just click on tool and click on data tip and if you click it for example at this point at this exactly 0.6 we know that according to x axis so 0.6 the signals value is minus 1.5 so sometimes it is very important to uh, add some data tips to understand or to explain the graph more uh, clearly so this kind of uh, tip uh, uh, these kind of data tips will be very useful uh, if you want to uh, clarify your explanation uh, explanation of graph as well, right? So I hope you have understand the plotting of a signal. These are the basic steps of plotting any signal. And in this uh, video tutorial, we have just assumed that signal we want to plot is sinusoid, though these techniques will be applicable to plotting of any kind of signal. Uh, and the basic uh, uh, basic tips will remain same. Uh, and those, what are those? Let me come back to the point uh, or come back to the code. That was the code that we wrote here. Remember, there should be some fundamental parameter like for sinusoid, we need frequency, I defined it. We need uh, amplitude, I defined it. Uh, you can also define phase here, for example, pi by two, pi f two pi or any other phase. I don't want to prolong this video tutorial uh, because I've already explained how one need to plot or what are the basic steps of plotting uh, of an sinusoid signal and you can use these basic steps to plot any kind of signal so i hope you understand the plotting of signal in matlab environment still if you need any uh, uh, question or any query to resolve you can post your comments uh, you you can post your queries in comment section thank you so much for listening